Hi everyone, Julie here and thanks for joining me. If you're a regular viewer then thank you very much and if you're new to this channel then thanks for giving it a look and if you like what you see, want to see more, don't forget to subscribe and like and share if possible because sharing is how I'll end up with more subscribers and more views and everything else. You can just share a video or the channel on your Facebook page. Um, I'd really appreciate that. So this is the 1st of January, so Happy New Year to everyone. I hope everyone had a, a good um, Christmas and New Year. I had a quiet Christmas, went down to my friend's house and it was just the two of us and we had tacos for Christmas lunch. My friend said sandwiches and I said no, it's got to be a bit more than that. So I only ever have tacos with her. I never do them just for myself because it's too much. So we had tacos, um, lots of leftovers and I've actually frozen the leftover meat and I'm going to add some bits to it and make shepherd's pie this coming week with it with the leftovers or the salad stuff I've already eaten but um no it was it was a good Christmas nice and quiet which is what I like so today I'm going to add this block that I've only just finished literally five minutes ago finished I'm going to add this block to these two which is the turtle with the stingray that I did a a um, YouTube short on and two fishes and going up the quilt I've actually finished row four I've still got five blocks in a long row that I have to add in but that needs to be done on the big table well this is the same size table but the table in the sewing room isn't cluttered up with books and trays and a printer and the laptop and everything else so I'll add them in at some point it's just the weather at the moment it's too hot it's going to be 33 degrees today that's Celsius that's not hot for Australia but it is warmer than I would like to be in the other room with just a pedestal fan um, putting the quilt together in here I've got a split system which I've just turned off to keep the noise down but it's much I'm, I do my blocks here and I cover my hexagons here so I can watch things on YouTube watch things that I've got on the hard drive you know like favorite shows or movies which I don't tend to do so much anymore um, or I'll tend to read fiction on the computer and sew a bit read a bit sew a bit you know I've always got something there to look at plus listening to my lectures and and attending tutorials I can do sewing bits while I do all those things um, talking about lectures I've got an assignment that's due on Wednesday that I haven't even started I'm hoping I can get it all typed out I've got the answer pretty much in my mind but I have to do um, referencing legal referencing and things so that's probably the most complicated part but I'll get it done I've got the results from another assignment coming out today you know they she said that in the p.m. so it could be you know roughly any time from now on hopefully it's not going to be midnight but I'll still be up then so I'll just have to keep checking she'll probably do a email to all the students on on a forum saying that it's out the results are out and then I'll go and look I'm not going to keep looking every half an hour for the next 12 hours to see if they're out so these blocks going up the quilt this is row five these two these are blocks five and six going across um, up to blocks you know one to four they had included that um, octopus so this goes beside basically all the tentacles and this one will go beside the part of the body of the octopus so it um, I'll end up doing this next block and then I'll add these four in to 
what's already done because I'm up to block six so this is five and six I'm up to block six in row four already added so I'll add these in and then that long block of you know a lot of five blocks and can then um, carry on with row five I was going to jump to row eight which has got the shark but that's going to have to be done um, it is only part of this added to the sky so working down but it's not quite as big but I need to add some hexagons in as it as it's sitting because the sharks added but there are gaps so it's not like I can do a complete block because the shark actually comes into it so I'll probably do that block we've got some cooler weather coming after tomorrow and I'll I'll get that block done at, at some point but the I'll get this next block done this week and I'll do a video on making it I'll do a start to finish tutorial on making that block um, other than that I've been covering hexagons like mad I don't know I mean I don't need them all done that madly quickly but just lining all this up as you can see the seaweed all lines up and I've matched the colours with the seaweed. I will have to get some more yellow fabric because I haven't got enough to do yellow seaweed for the entire rest of this quilt. I think there's something like 33, 34 blocks left to do. Um, which is, you know, three and a half thousand. You know, silly, silly number of hexagons still to sew into blocks and then add to the rest of the quilt so it is a an ongoing process um being new year i've um i don't do new year resolutions my main aim is to get the surgery out the way and anything else that's done this year on top of that will be a bonus i mean i want to get this quilt done this year and as per usual there's the the um intention to lose weight and get healthier and things like that and hopefully after the surgery is done i'll be a bit more mobile because at the moment i just put put my garbage bin out this morning and i have to i can use the garbage bin to lean on to put it out on the on the curb but I have to take my crutches with me so I can then get back to back to the house, back to the front door. So th I did that earlier to get the green waste bin out, which I normally never never use. But the guy came and trimmed my hedge the other week, and when he did the mowing, and he put the hedge cuttings in the bin, so that needed to be emptied. But um, so I did that, and I was coming back, and I saw there was a chicken in the backyard and yeah i'm not a chicken person i don't have chicken so that was something out of the ordinary the gates were all shut so it must have just flown in so the cat was out at the same time but i don't think she saw it or she might have and just didn't bother it's probably it was, would have been bigger than she is but i left the side gate open and i saw about half well an hour later it had um, wandered back out and wandered up past next door's house so I've shut the gate hopefully it finds its way home but yeah I've, I've got no facilities for, for chickens I'm not a, a chicken person or a bird person at all I um, also can't eat um, freshly laid free range eggs they actually they do my stomach in so you know supermarket eggs that have been sitting for weeks or whatever is absolutely perfect for me so sorry my hands are getting in the way here but it's just something that for me to do while i while i talk and dribble on um talking about the cat she gave me a bit of a scare the other day and had to go to the vet on friday for those that I'm sure I would have mentioned it at some point, my friend and I, the friend I went whose house I went to on Christmas Day, she just lives in the next town with a 
um, elderly father, um, we shared a house for years, you know, like 20 years ago. And we had, at one point, we had six cats and two golden retrievers, which is a lot of animals in anyone's language. And to give you an idea of inflation, I'm spending as much money now on cat food and kitty litter as we were spending 20 years ago for all those animals. Or 16 years ago, would we had six, six cats. Unfortunately, she had her cat, which was the oldest remaining of those six. Um, she had to be put down before Christmas. She was 19 years old which is a decent age for any cat. So she, that cat the others used to pick on. So when she moved out, she took the dogs because we wouldn't separate them. And this one cat that the others picked on, so I ended up with the five, well, we call them the five bastards. So, and over the years, one disappeared. That was, I don't know. 12 years ago or probably 11 years ago and so I had four and I had four for a while and over the years they've um one got cancer one got leukemia you know I had Clancy put down at the end of May well last year now um and I was just left with Scooter now Scooter's now 16 and I noticed the other day she had a lump on her side and one of the golden retrievers got lymphoma and had to be put down and i couldn't feel any other lumps i could feel something sticking out of the other side and i wasn't sure if it was just a rib or something wasn't right so my friend said make an appointment take her to the vet the next day so we took her to the vet and the lump is not it's not attached to a skin so it's not like a cyst type thing. It's actually, they think it's attached to a bone. They took a cell sample and couldn't really see anything. They said the next step would be x-rays, which is like $400, even if they don't have to use an anesthetic. And I don't have that sort of money. My friend has got vet pay, which is like after pay or whatever, but purely for vets. And I don't have that. Mainly because once you activate it, there's a $50 annual charge on it. But my friend had activated hers, you know, the other week for having that cat put down. So she said she'd pay and I'd pay her back. So the bill came to 140 She said, just um, pay her 70 I said, I'll pay you 100 So my savings plan, which I was actually started a little bit in advance, is now all gone on paying for a vet but at the end of the day that's what savings are for they're for these unexpected expenses so rather than having you know a little bit of money in my tin for savings I'll end up with only a tiny bit in the tin and pay my friend that hundred dollars this this coming week when I get my um, benefit payment so, yeah, at least the money's going on what it's supposed to go on, which is vets. You know, it's not like I'm saving up for frivolous things. It um, is to just get some money behind me if I have to move house for removalists or vet bills or car repairs or, you know, any of those things that you can't normally just pay outright. But the end of the story is, little fatty is right there on I bought a new desk chair I don't find it that comfortable she certainly does she's been on it all the time I call her the little fatty she's actually probably lost two kilos of weight in the past past year since Clancy or not even that since Clancy died she's not eating anywhere near as much I think she's well I've said before I think she's I don't know that she's stressed because you can get anti-stress cat food I think she's just lonely, but she's quite content sitting there beside me. She doesn't cry when she's when she's there, so and she doesn't try to get on the desk. So I'm quite happy with her 
just being there. So, you know, went from a possibility of taking her to the vet and not bringing her home to, you know, she could go another five years. Not likely seeing as if she's 16, but the vet said, you know, just keep an eye on her, which I do anyhow, and check her what she's eating and that she's going to the toilet and everything. So she's, um, she's fine. So, and not eating as much as normal, which means she's not going to the toilet as much, but that's all right. You know, I know that she's going because she'll only go in the litter. So, yeah, she's good. So that's scooted down. My studies are, as I said, I've got an assignment to do. It, um, I'm not sure yet. I'm going to wait. I've got exams in the first week of February. I've got three exams in the space of a week. Um, I'm going to see how I go on those subjects as to whether I stay doing law. I'm enrolled to do law at one university, but also I'm doing history and literature at another university and I may just do a Bachelor of Arts rather than a Bachelor of Laws, it'll depend. I mean, law's not hard. It's probably not that hard if you do all your study. I tend to not study as much as I should. Um, I really don't want to fail this contract law subject because I've already failed it once. But it'll be what it'll be. You know, I'm not... I don't need a qualification to get a job. I don't plan on ever working again. I had um, problems with my back and mobility issues before my hip went wrong, so that's not going to go away. You know, I'm still going to have that um, those issues. But at least back then I could walk, not not a huge distance, but I could walk out to the letterbox and everything. I didn't need to use crutches. And my length of thread's not long enough. Um, so we'll just see you know, how it goes, what happens with that, with the studying. Um, so the literature course, um, I can't enrol yet because I'm waiting on the university to play catch up with the results from last semester because it's saying I need a prerequisites, you know, four subjects for the ancient history and I've done four and it's through that university so there's no confusion about that but I just have to get them to take the prerequisite bit off my um, thing for enrolment and I can do that and that's Alexander the Great that I'll be doing there. The English literature is um, this from medieval to modern. There's a book called or a story called Phantomina which I listened to the audio book of and I must say it is about the most bizarre story I've ever heard in my life. It um I'm going to buy a study guide for it. Um, there's Shakespeare's Antony and Cleopatra, which I've got the book, I mean, four of the books so far that I know are definite, I've, I've got on order from a bursary that I got from the other university. Um, so Antony and Cleopatra, um, Jane Austen's Northanger Abbey. I think I've mentioned all this before. This Phantomina, and one that is an old one, which is, is it, I don't know how you pronounce it, Sir Gawain, G-A-W-A-I-N, and the green something. Um, I can't even think of what the, um, I know it's a green something. And I watched a few YouTube clips about it. It um, it's quite um, I won't say Tolkien-esque, but it. Oh, now I'm trying to look at what the books are. Um, yeah, previously in pre this year's one book list isn't out completely. I've had the the um oh so Gawain and the Green Knight how I couldn't work out that word um 
So they're the four books that I know of. There's five in total, whether the fifth one will be The Hound of the Baskervilles, the unit coordinator didn't say, he just gave me the four that are definite. So Shakespeare, Jane Austen, This Phantomina and Sir Gawain. Um, and I've got those four books on order through the other university as well as a couple of books on for that if I do it through that um, as or, uh, history as an elective for my law courts degree that's also Alexander the Great so those six books come to 230 or 240 dollars which good thing I've got a thousand dollar bursary because you know trying to pay for textbooks and survive on unemployment benefit is a big ask in anybody's language. So that's where I'm sitting at with the studying. Some results today. I've got another assignment on torts, which is negligence, which I did the other week. So those results should be out next week. Um, hopefully by Friday night, but it'll be when it'll be. Um, and this one I've got to do for submit by Wednesday so hopefully fingers crossed and we'll just see how we go um, I haven't done much with the miniature furniture I've got I got some balsa wood because I thought that's an easy way to start but I'm doing some um, like a shelving bookcase unit and the length they're quite long probably close on three inch long shelves yeah, in the miniature form no two inch and the balsa wood's very very thin so I'll do it as a as a trial but I've got proper proper um, basswood and I've received in the post this week I only got out the letterbox today um these are three supposed to be three millimeter but they look bigger but um, wooden rods because this this shelving has metal rods holding up one end of a shelf and a solid piece the other end as it goes up it alternates and I was cut some um, cocktail sticks to length for the one inch for the risers but these will be better they're much stronger and these ones here are oh, they're the same again so I need to get a vernier caliper so I can make sure but they're um, three millimeter um, rods that I will use um, I'll just stop this for a second restart it because it'll turn itself off so the only other thing I've been doing is covering hexagons and I have a like a tally card that I do each I do it each one each year I mean the year started in November my aim is to cover a thousand hexagons a month you know if some months over the past you know five years I might have covered you know five thousand or ten thousand you know I don't think I've ever done twelve thousand in a whole year but November I did two thousand three hundred and, and December I've done 4,100 so that's a crazy number of hexagons covered I just sit here and get my little drawers that I've got my hexagons in from all that fabric I bought I haven't even finished cutting it all up yet um, so I've been doing that I've been covering more hexagons for the sea I ended up getting I think it was a thousand and eight hexagons out that fabric that I bought the other week and I've got 500 left of those to cover I'll probably do a hundred of them I do them a hundred at a time hundred of them tonight once I finish either finish the assignment or call it quits on it for the night I won't start this next block until I finish the assignment but yes you know, it's it's something easy to do while I'm sitting here I haven't got to put band-aids on to cover hexagons I've got my container with the 
the needle I use for covering hexagons which is I don't know if I can do this which is I don't know if you can tell the difference it is humongously thicker it's like four times thicker than the one I use for sewing the hexagons together Let's see. it um, so I've got that and my old faithful pin cushion with bits of fabric stuck to the bottom and I've got my three colors black white and red for covering the hexagons so I did the last hexagons I did was this pale blue fish and I did them with the red fabric to make it easier to see the blue ones I tend to for the sea I tend to use red red fabric because it just shows up a bit better I don't even know if you can see it there um, obviously for that dark green when I covered those hexagons I did that with the white so it depends on the fabric you know the yellow ones I use black because that's easier for me to see it makes no difference because nothing shows through on the other side so it um I thought there was a gap so yeah that's what I do I just pick the right color I've already got the sea colored fabric hexagons that are cut sitting here in a container so I don't even have to go in the other room to get them to start covering them tonight. I've still got, um, I think it's including the bits for the sky for the next, for the second quilt. I think I've got eight quarters that still need to be cut up and then covered as well as that two meters of fabric for the sky. So we're talking uh, over 3,000 hexagons still to be cut out which will get done probably in the next week and once they're done as I said other than probably some more yellow I've got that mustardy kind of color I can use for seaweed but I'll probably just get more of my favorite yellow as I go further along the quilt with things colors matching what's below it there will be some other color um, seaweed but we'll just see I th I've got enough of different greens but there I think I might just need one more yellow and I'll end up getting that at some point as I get closer towards finishing this probably probably around April-ish I'll get another yeah, I don't know might even get a meter of the yellow because it can go into the next quilt but I'll get the batting and the backing fabric for this quilt and and um, do that so my picture for this quilt I still need to cross off one two three three um, blocks on rows five and six for these three but row four is totally made not necessarily added the all the side of the cliffs done all the way and across the top and the first two rows coming into row eight which allowed for the base of the lighthouse and for the it's got the top of the shark in it so once I've got these two rows done, I'll probably go row eight and then row seven, and that'll be it. So I've got 11 and 11 there to do, so that's 22. Thirty-three blocks left to go, which is a lot less than the 130 that I started with so we do that and the final topic for today is my surgery at the moment it is booked in for 24th of February which is a Friday I would expect to actually be coming home on the Monday at the latest I'm hoping 
I've got a pre-admission appointment at the hospital on the 17th of January. I need to have a, they sent a, a blood test. I don't know what the correct word for it is. It's not a referral, but a request. Um, where I go to the doctor, there's a, a pathology place there, you know, a little office thing where you can have blood tests done. And although this is not the same company that the request is through, they will do it. Um, you know, the request from, from other um, blood group, blood people. So I'm going to the doctor on Wednesday morning anyhow for a totally unrelated thing. And I will get the blood test done while I'm there and they will send it off to the hospital. They'll have that well in advance of my pre-admission appointment. I've already got taken the labels off the boxes of medication that I'm on because they need to know that. I mean, I know it all off by heart what they are, but they want to see it so I've just taken the labels off the off the boxes and I will take them to the hospital with me for that appointment I've also got to do a fill in a form with you know says you know how many steps you've got what sort of shower you've got which I've lied about I said I had a walk-in shower I've actually got a shower over the bath that I've got no intention of using when I come home from hospital I'll use I've got one of those handheld shower things and I'll use that wash my hair over the laundry tub um, my friend can always pick me up and take me down to her place. She's got walk-in shower. But I'm hoping not to have to do that because the one thing I'm not sure how I'm going to be able to do is get in and out of a car even as a passenger. I mean, I have extreme trouble doing that now. But it's the actual movement of the hip when you do that as to... Yeah because you can in the first few weeks you can end up just knocking the whole joint out so I'll have to ask them and find out it might be I have to you know get in sideways into the back seat and whatever rather than try and get in the passenger seat and obviously driving is out of the question my friend did lend me a automatic car the other week but I gave it back to her on Christmas day because that was actually more painful than having to use a clutch which is crazy just having my leg out straight, you know, my left leg was, was more painful than using that leg to operate a clutch. So I've got my own car back. So I'm happy about that. The automatic was great, but too painful. So pre-admission on the 17th, which I think part of it will be with the occupational therapist. Um, I've had to right you now the heights of my chairs and all the rest of it you know how many steps what your shower's like um access into the house all those sort of things i've got to do the height of the bed and the height of the chairs that i use and so i'll just do that i know my bed's high enough because when i saw the occupational or well, the um pre-therapy people at the other hospital they said no that bed height's absolutely fine so that was one concern. So I'll just see what they decide because obviously you see the anaesthetist. He's the one who looks at all your medication, makes sure you know you don't have dentures or whatever or checks your mouth to make sure. My blood sugars should be fine. They've been fine or fine for me. Um, I don't expect any nasty surprises at the pre-admission but then... I didn't expect any last time and I had to go and have that heart ultrasound and then they made me go and have a a um, heart stress test and then the angiogram and at the end of the day the hospital said no we're not doing it so you never can tell so fingers crossed this hospital they had no issues with everything when they did the angiogram they did my um, blood sugar and all the rest of it they had no no reservations so hopefully for the surgery it'll go fine if not it's i don't even know what they can get me to do you know get my blood sugar down to absolute normal you know as down as low as the other anaesthetist said it needed to go you know before she would allow the surgery so it's actually got below what she specified so we just have to see I think the other hospital 
um, refuse to do it because they don't actually have an ER, which I was surprised at. And the one that it's now going to be done at does, so they have more backup if something goes wrong. Not that I expect anything to go wrong, but this has just been a long, drawn-out process, and you, you never can tell. But that's it. Go to the get the blood test done this coming week. Go to the pre-admission thing on the seventeenth, and then then um, hopefully have the surgery on the twenty fourth of February. Because at the moment it's just I won't say it's getting worse by the day, but it's definitely getting worse by the week. And hopefully once it's done, I won't then find I have to have the other one done. But you never can tell. But um, at least I know I've got one good knee. That's something. And I think because there's no arthritis in that leg, I'm hoping the hip won't... that the hip's just out of whack because of compensating for the bad one. And it'll come good once the other one's replaced. So just have to wait and see so what I'm doing now I'm just taking the papers out I've had people ask you know why don't I take them all out at the end and it's time consuming enough and making sure you don't miss any when you're only taking out well there's ten ten rows so I'm only taking out sixteen out of these two, you know, where the, the blocks have joined, and it's tedious enough. There's no way I would even contemplate taking out, I call it 15,000 hexagons for this quilt, it's 14,950 it'll be. And I only know that exactly because I know exactly how many blocks there are. But um, there's no way, I mean, I wouldn't even do a whole row of the quilt in one hit it's just it's just too many you know i do them as i go with the block every length of thread and there's about there's roughly 10 lengths of th thread per block sewing the hexagons together you know each time i've done one length of thread i'll pull out any these are those playing card ones any um hexagons that are surrounded that are you know, free to come out and it just makes life easier doing it bit by bit all these ones coming out of hexagons that can be used again in my tray here I've got some that are a bit they're too damaged to use again some of them are torn some of them have just been used so many times I can't use them again um, you know it's like some people can use paper hexagons I can't I find them too thin or I hold everything too hard and I can only use card ones and when they get thin then I still can't use them again but right now one more there it um you know I've got a container so I separate them as I take them out ones that can be used again ones that can't and when there's a hun sorry when there's a hundred then I this one I've managed to catch the paper as I've been sewing it. So I can't pick up on. See this one? It's a thinner card. And it's just too damaged. I've actually pulled the edge off that. That's why you can't reuse all of them. Because some get damaged. And if I look in here, there's a tiny bit of cardboard still there. Which I'll try and pick out later. But for now, that's, there's over a hundred in here. I'll use these for the, I use used ones for the water because that fabric just slides everywhere on the playing card ones, even after they've been scuffed up. So I'll count them out or I'll, you know, put them in piles of 10 later for a hundred. Put a tick on the tally for, that's this quilt. So, so far I've done... 10,700 hexagons I've taken out of it. So basically 10,800 once I've taken 100 out of here. But I won't cross it off on the tally till I've done this. 
and I won't do this until after I've got my assignment done and I'm, or tonight and I'm ready to cover more hexagons. So they can just sit there. This is that block now added. It's a bit hard to see because it's a pale blue with a lot of blue behind it. But if you look at it in real life, it's actually quite noticeable. I like this green. Even though there's other greens, it's different enough that it's not um, buried into the background. The red, the yellow with flowers came out a lot bolder than I expected. That was a brown I got for the... Um, side of the cliff but this is far enough across in the in the um in the quilt that it's not near the cliff so that's a turtle obviously black for the stingray i've got stingrays of other colors in the in the quilt but that one was just there i mean i did the blocks for this yeah you know, months ago so that's my block i color them in so i know what they are it doesn't mean it's going to be those colors but when I did all these pages, the blocks all line up with the blocks below it. So the seaweed, as you can see in this, the seaweed actually, well, it actually carries on all the way through. So I've done that the wrong way, this way, turn it this way. And the seaweed lines go all the way through. So the blocks above this will have that yellow seaweed going up and that green there won't be there might be ones above this because that seaweed could have gone all the way behind the fish I won't know till I get to row seven these few here obviously they're only going to go that far so now that I've bored you all to tears with all this dribbling on today I will finish this up put this away and get on with my studying that I've been avoiding for weeks and get this assignment done and thank you for watching don't forget to like and share and subscribe if you haven't done any of those things and I will see you on the next one next week thank you